your friend is playing a terrible, terrible piano piece. And they ask you, how do you like the music? You hold your distaste and say, well, it's very uh, distinctive. Your friend represents marketers and video game developers who are facing the same trouble when their audience is trying to be polite, but this can lead to crappier games and ads. Today, we're going to look at facial electromyography, or FEMG for short. It can cut to the preconscious of lies by recording and then processing these electrical signals generated by muscles. We're going to look at two muscle groups, the psychomaticus major muscle, which is corresponded to smiling, and the corrugator muscle, which is corresponded to frowning. These muscle groups will control a color of LED each, and this will be done while I watch some pleasant or maybe unpleasant ads on YouTube. So the overall workflow looks like recording, amplifying, processing, and the output. For recording, the motor cortex initiates an intention for movement. That signal travels down through a neuron to the spinal cord, then to a lower motor neuron, which directly connects to a muscle. And during that, a chain of events happens, which includes the release of calcium ions from the muscle. And if you squeeze your arm, muscle really hard, for example, there's going to be more frequent contractions and more number of muscles involved in this movement, so there will be a stronger voltage that's recorded across the surface. And for the recording, the two, um, two electrodes are placed. If they're placed too close, then the wave of ions that pass below them, also known as the wave of depolarization, is really similar, so you will not get a large voltage. And the electrical signals travel from the electrodes through the wire to the board, the ganglion board, where they are amplified. For processing, we use a couple of software including OpenVCI GUI, Python, and the Arduino board. For OpenVCI GUI, in the top left here, you can see a time series graph. On the x-axis, there is time, and on the y-axis, there is the voltage amplitude. And um, when there are many spikes, like circled uh, right here, you can see muscle contraction, and when there's not a lot of spikes, it corresponds to muscle relaxation. And here in the lower right corner, you can start an LSL stream. LSL is a protocol for communicating lab data across the same network. In this case, we want the data to communicate it to the Python script. And here we've broken the Python script into two chunks. The first part is just importing libraries, including PyLSL, time, and serial, and customizing three variables. The time threshold, which is how frequently you can contract your muscles, or how, much, how many milliseconds have passed since the last contraction that you're allowed to do so, the previous time in milliseconds, and the flex threshold, which is a value from 0 to 1. And here's the main part of the code. In a while loop, we use if statements to check if the corresponding EMG channel spikes past a specific threshold that we set earlier and that a good amount of time has passed. If both of them are true, we tell Serial to send a corresponding letter, either Y, R, or B, depending on the LED we want to be lighted up. Now the Arduino is the last part of the workflow. This code is really simple as it just receives the byte either Y, R, or B, and converts it into a high signal on the corresponding yellow, red, or blue pin on the Arduino. And lastly, we're implementing the circuit on the breadboard. The three colors are just three repeated parallel circuits. In each circuit, there are transistors, LEDs, and resistors. The transistor is just a physical if statement. In an NPN transistor, the right two are the input pins and the left is the output pin. And um, if the collector receives 5 volts and the base receives a high signal from the Arduino, then the emitter will release a current to the LED. But if the collector receives 5 volts, as it always does, and the base does not receive a high signal from the Arduino, then there's no current release and the LED does not turn on. Oh no! I'm a hair! You're about to get sick! Oh no! Ah! 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 Wait! We sure had a lot of fun times together, didn't we? Remember that time in the amusement park? It was the best day of my life. I'm sorry! Ah! Oh, 
Who's Bryce Electric Saver? It's Sharp. That one Sharp Saver? <laughs> Get shaved in the face! I did. So, what have I missed? Some advantages about FEMG are that the signals don't have to be visible to be detected, and that it doesn't depend on the cognitive effort or memory of the participant, and some studies have shown even when the participants are restraining their responses, it can still be picked up by the electrodes. Some disadvantages are that EMG can change facial expression, and that there is a limit to the number of muscles it can record because the equipment is kind of clunky, and that for a certain medicine like muscle relaxants, it can change the muscle behavior and the result is still picked up by the electrodes. Here we've only shown the use of two muscle groups, but with more electrodes, you can detect up to 43 total groups of muscles in the face for elementary emotions, for example, joy, fear, surprise, anger, and even calculate more complex emotions.